If you want to join me in Exodus chapter 4, we're going to finish out our, our stretch mark series today. And, and uh, I'm really excited about today. I'm excited about this message. I feel like every message up to this point has led up to this message. Everything that we've talked about, stretching your faith and your stability and your confidence, all the stuff that we talked about all leads to this point in my mind. And so I've been really excited. I've been just kind of trying to, to help lay the foundation with the first three messages so that this last one can close it out strong. So we're going to pull that from Exodus chapter 4. We're going to read the whole chapter. It's only 17 verses. So if you didn't read in the busyness of your week, we're going to catch you up right now. If you don't have your Bible because you're holding your Starbucks, then that's okay. We got the Sky Bible. That's Trisha's jam. So we're going to, we're going to ride out with the Sky Bible today. Exodus chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 1. We ended off last week. Our message was from the beginning of a conversation that Moses was having with God through the burning bush. And so we're going to pick up the, the second part of that conversation in chapter 4, verse 1. Are you ready? Okay, I'm talking to you three. Then Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. Suppose the, so the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from it. I'm not really mad at Moses for that. I don't like snakes either. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Furthermore, the Lord said, now put your hand in your bosom or in your robe. And he put his hand in his bosom and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow, white with disease, infected. And he said, put your hand in your bosom again. So he put it his hand in his bosom again, and he drew it out of his bosom, and behold, it was restored like his other hand. That is the most I've ever said the word bosom in my life. I just want you to know that. Verse 8, then it will be if they do not believe nor heed the message of the first sign that they will believe the messages of the latter sign. And it shall be if they do not believe even these two signs or listen to your voice that you shall take water from the river and pour it on dry land and the water which you take from the river will become blood on dry land. Then Moses said to the Lord, oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Many people believe that that meant Moses had a stutter. That even as he was arguing with God, he was saying, but, 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 but God, I am slow of speech. And I am slow of tongue. And you want me to go to the king of Egypt, the most powerful person in the land. And you want me to tell him with authority to let your people go. I can see where Moses was a little hung up on this job description. So the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth, who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing and the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now, therefore, go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. But he said, oh, my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he, when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put these words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be as a mouth for you, and you shall be to him as God. In other words, God is saying he will speak for you, and you will speak to him for me. You got to be careful who you speak to because you might be the voice of God for that person's life. You might be the peace that they need to hear. You might be the hope that they need to get through the week. If God is speaking to you to speak to somebody else, never be ashamed of what God has has told you for somebody else, but speak to that person the way that God is speaking to you. Verse 17, 
and you shall take this rod in your hand, with which you shall do the signs. Another translation says, which you shall do my wonders. I want to talk about the last part of the Stretch Mark series, and I want to talk about how God will stretch our development. Let's pray. God, thank you for bringing us back safely today after a holiday weekend. Thank you for watching over us as we travel. Thank you for just giving us a great time and and, and showing us all that we have to be thankful for. So God, today I am thankful for your word. I am thankful for your people, and I'm thankful for your call in my life. I ask you to watch over us, to bless us, to use me as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now let me try to make something out on this paper here. Stretch marks are a declaration of development. They show something that is going on on the inside. Stretch marks is something that you see. We are a people of development. We start to develop at our conception. That is not a debate. If you're pro-choice, if you're pro-life, you do not have a debate. The moment you are conceived in the womb, you are being developed. You grow through the process. You can watch it from in the books. You can look at medical science. That is a true fact. That is not an option for debate. That is a truth. You are developing from the moment you are conceived. We are a people of development. Until we take our last breath, we continue to develop. Until we leave this earth and we stand before God in judgment, we continue to be developed each and every single day of our life. My mother has worked with mentally handicapped people uh, and older people as long as I can really remember. And so I can remember hearing her say things to doctors and hearing different things. And what she would talk about was that in the event that somebody is, is mentally handicapped, that, that what they call it is a developmental issue, that their brain does not develop as much as maybe their body does, or that the development mentally stops short and they are unable to keep developing the way a, a healthy person would develop. And I remember her having people in the house, and, 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 and they would be maybe 15, 20 years old, or however old some of them were, but they had the mentality of a child because mentally their development stopped, but physically they kept going. There is always going to be some area of development in your life. Even if one stops, there is still development. You can still learn. The people that she would take care of and that she would have at the house, they were not ignorant people. They did not, they were not dumb people. They were just not developed as much as other people. They could learn, they could write, they could feed themselves, they could do a lot of the things that we can do, but there was an area of their life where their development stopped. As spiritual people, as people who are here to be a representation of God on this earth, we cannot get to the place where our development stops. We are in charge of showing people the love of Jesus. We are in charge of showing people the commitment of Jesus. We are in charge of being the image of God in this earth. We are the image bearers. When God got ready to make man, he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. We are to reflect what he is inside of us. We are to reflect the development of God in our lives. Doctors would say in in, in a lot of cases that, that these are just developmental problems, that they lack the capacity to go further in development. They grow physically, but they don't grow past a certain age mentally. And I think we as the body of Christ, we as Christians, we as a church, I think sometimes we find ourselves in a similar state where we grow physically. Our churches get bigger, but the mentality of the church stays the same age. Our church can be 4,000 people deep, but we have a, a message and a doctrine that is only five years old. We lose the importance of what God says in his word because we focus more on how many people are in the room than how much God is in the people. The choice should not be, I want to see more people in the room. The, 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 the concern should always be, I want to see more God in the people. When Chastity and I started youth ministry, we started uh, uh, doing, uh, working with a, a kid at the, uh, with the kids that we had at the first church we went to. And we went there, and it was like one child or one teenage kid. And, and we grew the youth group up to a, a good-sized youth group. And, and, and what we always said was, I would rather have one kid that really wants to get a hold of God than to have 45 kids who just want to come and hang out and get away from home. 
And so we poured our time into them and resources, and we had nothing. We had no family. We had no friends. All we had was our youth group, and we poured everything we could into them. And that was our family. And we got to see them grow. And we, we left there and we went to Texas. And I remember e- getting emails and stuff in, in, in MySpace back in the day, you know, MySpace messages. And it, was like, and it was like, you don't understand how much you guys really impacted our lives. And, and now we made our mistakes and, and everything didn't go right. And, and we, we had our issues. It was our first ministry. And so we didn't really know how to do certain things the right way. And so we walked through trials. And it was all a developmental place to get us where God was leading us next. That where we would go in our new ministry, where we would go in our next step, in our next level, we would be prepared for because of the development that we got in our first stage. Our second stage developed us for our third stage. Our third stage developed us for our next stage. And the stage we're in now will continue to develop us for the stage we're in later. But what we can never lose is the fact that the goal is to get God and the people, not to get people in a church. I've said this before, I'll say it until the day I die. We are not sitting in the church. We are the church sitting in a building. You don't go to church, you bring the church to the building. That is what we're here for. The development that goes on inside of us is not just to say, I go to church, I know new songs, I I know new scriptures. It's about how close I'm getting to God, how I'm letting God use me, how I'm hearing new things that God is speaking to my life, the way that God is showing me new things, the way that God is bringing me new places. All these things speak back to our development. And if our development is hindered at the beginning, it will never grow properly. That's why I hate to see people. I I, Listen, I'm going to say something right here that you guys might judge me for, and that's okay. You can. You can judge me. I'm giving you permission to judge me for it right now because what I'm about to say is a little bit judgmental, but I think that it goes with the Bible. The Bible says you will know somebody by the fruits they bear, and I've looked at some churches, and I've seen some people, and I've seen some pastors on TV, in person, the people I know, people I've heard of, people I've seen, people I've met, and I look at them, and I think, how in the world do they have one person who is willing Willing to follow them. How do they have one person who is willing to sit there and listen at what they say about anything? They can't lead their, yeah, they might be captivating, they might be able to speak, they might be able to jump up and holler and sweat and, and tell a good story, and they might be able to put a good message together, but there is no development. You leave the church the same way you came in. Now, if you choose to do that personally, that's your business. But if, you, if, if that's the, the, the way that you, you leave the way you came in because there's no food where you're at, then that's my business. I work hard to prepare a good message that I would be able to share God's word, that I would give scriptural backup, that I would get into the scripture, that I would look at it, that I would study it, that I would rest in it, so that when I come here and I deliver it to you, the development that I've gone through over this past week would transfer to you and that something I say in the sermon, whether it's today, last week, next month, two years from now, that it will hit you in such a way that a new seed begins to develop inside of you and everything you thought up to that point has now changed and you cannot go on living the same old life, holding the same old grudges, doing the same old stuff, locked in the same old addiction because there is a development that has taken place in your your life and you have to acknowledge it development that is not acknowledged just dies you have to be aware of what God is doing in your life we can see development everywhere we go on our drive to work you can see new buildings being developed in your pocket when you pull your phone out and you say I got the new iPhone 10 I got the new Samsung Galaxy 74. Whatever you're holding in your hand to show everybody that you are important, that you got it going on because you got the next new thing. I, listen, I'm going to tell you something. That I, did you know in New York they sell Rolexes at Walmart? By Walmart, what I mean is a sketchy dude standing against a wall with a briefcase in front of him with a bunch of Rolexes in it. And the second hand ticks, it doesn't glide. Okay, what's the point of that? The point of that is to say, I bought one of those. 
That was my main goal in going to New York, was to go somewhere and find some sketchy dude and buy a, a Rolex off the street. That is what I wanted to do. I'm wearing it today. You can come see me after church, and I will show you all of its glory. But the point is this. That Rolex doesn't make me anything, whether it's a real Rolex or a fake Rolex. I don't need the next new thing. I'll be cool with a $30 knockoff off the side of the street in New York. I'm not going to spend $15,000 on my watch, even if I had it. Do you know why? This watch tells the same time that that watch tells, and I don't care if the sec second hand ticks, glides, trips, falls, stumbles. I don't care what it does. As long as it gives me accurate time that I can look at and immediately not respond to while I'm holding you guys here all day, I don't care what it is. It do, I'm, that doesn't make me who I am. My suit does not make me who I am. My smartphone does not make me who I am. The car I drive does not make me who I am. I am who I am by the development that God has started in me. And when I allow it to cultivate and to become something new in my life, that is what makes me me. I am a, listen, I am not my biggest fan. I'm good with me. I know me. I, I, I like me. I'm, I'm a fan of me. But as far as doing this and sharing God's word and preaching and all this stuff, I don't find myself to be the greatest speaker in the world. I think sometimes you got a terrible voice. I don't know how them people listen to you. You got a voice that sounds like I just, they're, never mind. Uh, but but, but I, I, I pick myself apart. But I'll tell you this. I'm comfortable in the God who makes me what I am. And I'm comfortable in the gift that he's given me. And I can say I'm a better preacher today than I was five years ago. And I can say that by the grace of God, as long as I keep living, as long as I keep letting him develop inside of me, I will be a better preacher in five years than I am today. I will be a better leader in five years than I am today. I will better be a better father in five years than I am today. I will be a better husband. Am I a better husband 15 years compared to one? Oh, there it is. See, write it down. Take a picture because I might not get that again. <laughs> Development is the key to growth in your life. Development is the key. Oftentimes we sit here and, and, and the place where we see the least amount of development is in God's house. Oh, no, it, it's big. Don't get me wrong. We got full churches and we got big buildings and we got marble floors and we got, you know, gold toilets and stuff in churches. And we got like like 97-inch plasma screens for people to use the Sky Bible. And like there's, there's, there's a TV every five steps you go in the church. And that's great. If, it, if that's your thing and that's what you want to find, you can find it. In any city, in any state, you can find one of those big glorious churches. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with a nice church. There's nothing wrong with a big building. I see a big building inside of this small room right here. I, I see something great out of something. But the Bible says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Small beginnings take you to big destinations. But you cannot be so focused on the big destination that you lose the seed of God that is being planted inside your heart. You cannot lose the, 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 the little delicate development because you're focused on the bigger picture. You cannot lose the small thing. You cannot leave somebody behind because they're not keeping up with you. If they're not keeping up with you, it is the, the, I, I knew a guy who was in the Army, and he said one of the things, he was the sergeant over his team, troop, whatever. I don't, I mean, obviously, I was not in the military. <laughs> and so over his people, over his crew, he, he, was, he was in charge. <laughs> Shut your face. This is my message. I'll preach it how I want to. He, over his thing, he, he, over his stuff, he was in charge. And what he told me was, I guess there is a military person right here. So I could have asked her. What he told me was that you never leave somebody behind. Even if they're hurt, even if they're injured, even if you can go back for somebody that's already dead, if you can grab them, you grab them and you bring them home. Yes, sir. And so that is what we do in church. 
If, if, you, if you're going too fast and maybe you can't be the one, I'm not going to be able to stop and go back and grab everybody. But I have leadership. We have teams. There are other people in this church who are mature Christians who where if I'm focused on doing something over here and, and Pastor Josh is focused on doing something over there and Chastity is focused on doing something over there, that, that, that Tim or Kenny or Dustin or somebody can go and grab that person and say, you're going to walk with me me. I'm not going to leave you behind. I'm going to bring you forward. I'm going to put new life into you. I'm going to help you find a new form of reality that, 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 that you can follow each and every day. And it might start where you got to hold somebody's hand and you got to walk them through this thing. But eventually what, what they do is they turn into Jaden, where no matter how many people are around you, no matter where you're at, whether you're in home, whether you're at Walmart on Maysville, or whether you're in the middle of the Thanksgiving parade with 45,000 of your closest friends, he decides it's time to go, and he walks away. Eventually, I said, you better stay right here. I'll squeeze his hand so hard his eyeballs would pop out, but, and he would be like, Dad, let go. I promise I won't go nowhere. And I said, okay, but you better stay right next to me. And I had to keep looking. And every now and then he'd get caught off guard by something in a window or something he saw. Every, every now and then he, he would be doing, it, it gets worse than that. Chastity said on multiple occasions, where's Jaden? And she was holding his hand. <laughs> or she had her arm around him like this and she was wide, and she would be like, where's JJ? And St- uh, Stephanie was like, next to you but the problem is that when we go into church we don't worry about where somebody else is we don't look at somebody and and, and say Jessica is there anything I can do to help you can I move you forward if if you're happy where you're at and you you just want to live on that plane and you just want to stay where you're at and coast and you're not interested in a new level of a relationship with God or a new level of any other area you're just happy where you are then fine then you can stay there but I'm going to put some kind of attachment so that I know I always got an access to you but my goal is not for you ever to stay happy with where you are you should never be happy with the same old thing over and over again eventually you have have to strive for something better. You have to search for something more. You have to become something. God has put a seed of greatness in everybody, and it's up to us to develop it. It's up to us to cultivate it. It's up to us to find out what he's put inside of us. There are some great singers in this room. There are some great preachers in this room. There are some great Bible teachers in this room. There are some great leaders in this room. But you're sitting there with a dying seed because you're not allowing it to develop. Don't you get it twisted. I'm about to call somebody out right here. I sat right here last week, and I heard, I'm not going to say Angie's name, but singing like a little angel from heaven right behind me. And I was like, yes, Lord, is that you? She was doing her thing back there. I've heard Trisha, like, like just singing. There are great things in this room. Not a big room, not a million people, but there are gifts inside of each and every one of us. And it's up to us to find out what that is. And it's up to us to plug that in. And it's up to us to say, I don't care what I have to do. I don't care what I have to eliminate. I don't care what I have to change. I don't care what I have to lose. The most important thing to me is that I live a life that was God ordained for me, that I use my gifts for him, that I use my talents for him, and that the seed that's inside of me begins to to develop more and more and more to the point where the people I used to know look at me and they say, what has happened to you? And I can say, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about the change in my life. Because when I think back to all the stuff I've been through and I think back to the streets that I've been in and I think back to the gun shots I heard and I think back to the fights that I've made it through, I look back and I say, God, if you were with me then, you will be with me now. If you forgave me for that, you will forgive me for this and if you can use me through all that then there is no end to what you will do in my life when I think about the goodness of Jesus I get excited 
I was talking, I think, to Trisha last week or the beginning of this week or whenever I cut her hair, and, 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 and I, said, I said something to the effect of, I can't help but get excited. I, she, was, she texted me about coming and getting a haircut, and I said, I, we were talking about church or something. I don't remember how it went, and I said, I said, um, I said, oh, I was telling her to come to the testimony service, and she goes, oh, I have a softball game, and I said, well, I'm not going to be up there holding you down all night, so you're good to go, and she goes, I, I don't mind, I said, I, I said, I'm sorry, when I start talking about God, and I start talking about the goodness of God, I just get excited, and I just want to keep going, and going, and going, and going, and, and like 90% of what I've already told you this morning is nowhere on that notebook, and so you're, this is all just stuff that happens while I'm up here, and, and, and God begins to share things with me, and he says, tell it to my people, and I get so excited that I can't help it, and she goes, that's fine, but I can't do that while I have this going on. That's why I take Sunday, and that is my day to sit, and this is what she said, which I don't know if it was a compliment or not. You can decide, but she said, that's why I do nothing else but listen to you on Sunday, <laughs> and I was like, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag what? <laughs> like, I don't know what that means, but uh, okay. The problem is that in God's house, churches lose their identity and Christians lose their passion for God and no one develops correctly because the, the churches are not developing. They're not growing properly. We have conformed to the identity of this world and not changed it to look like us. Our job is to make the world out there look like the God inside of us, but we cannot show them the God inside of us if it's overshadowed by the world that's on top of us. We can hide the God in us by the things we do, by the places we go, by the things we say. I know I know that's an old school message. This is 2017. You better take that back to Billy Graham in 1965. No, no, no. This is a message that doesn't die. This is a message that doesn't end. If you want to see God's best in your life, you have to see your best in God's presence. You have to give God your best if you want to get God's best for you. We have to do our part to see the glory of God fall in our life, in our family, in our church, in our anywhere we are. And it all starts when the seed grows. Can you tell that this is my favorite part? I feel like I'm doing better on this message than I have the rest of the messages, and y'all are just letting me suffer up here, Jessica. I was expecting you to be jumping and shouting by this point, for the love of Jesus. So when Chastity got pregnant with Isaiah, that's how we're going to start this story. It was new to us. It was, a, it was He's our first child, our little grown man child over there. And, 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 and so we were going through all this at the same time. It was the first thing for like it was the, the, all the doctor's appointments came, and that was all new, and, 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 the, and the different changes to the diet and the fact that we used to eat a lot of different things and that ever, all the different things we used to eat turned into just chocolate chip pancakes. Like all these different changes that we had to make in the, in, in the production of, of Isaiah developing inside. And, and we would sit down and we would read the little books and the like what to expect when expecting, like that everybody does. I don't know, maybe you don't do that. But like when it was your first child, like we was trying to figure this all out. I was like, I don't want to hurt the thing. It's like a little grape in there and I don't want to mess it up. And so we're reading about it. And every week we looked at the development of what he looked like and how he started off looking like a shrimp and it was ugly. And then he turned into like with the one of the ultrasounds, he looked exactly like a Teddy Graham, like, like the little cookies. He looked exactly like a Teddy Graham. And, and then, and, and so we would start, and then she decided as she started growing and her, and her belly started getting uh, bigger because of the development going inside, she said, well, I don't want to be covered in stretch marks. And so she would take this cocoa butter and she would rub it on her belly. Maybe you don't need to know all that, but it's important to my point. She would rub it on her belly. And I would say, why are you doing that? Because, like, it, it looked greasy. And, like, I don't like to, if I have lotion or something on me, like, I can't put my shirt back on until the lotion has dried off. I'm not with that. And so she's, like, getting all greasy and then putting on her shirt. I'm like, what are you? It was hurting my heart. I was like, no, no, no. We ain't with that in this house. I don't know what. Anyway, um, and I would say, why are you? And she would do it in the morning and she would do it at night. And she would keep that thing, like, lotioned up all the time. And I would say, what are you doing that for? And she would say, because if my body stretches too much, I will get these stretch marks all over my stomach, all over my side, all over these different areas. 
And so she would do these things. And, 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 and so what I would tell her is that, that uh, and I still tell her that, because no matter how many people know if you've had a baby or if you've grown at all, like I have stretch marks on my shoulders and, and stuff from because when I started lifting weights, I was real scrawny and skinny. And when I ended lifting weights, I was real big and like, like you know, mm, now I'm just fat. And so like, uh, but, but I got like these stretch marks from the growth that I had. But I, told, I tell her even to this day, I say, those stretch marks are not something to be ashamed of. Those stretch marks are not something that you should hide. That those stretch marks are something that says you had something developing inside of you. The stretch marks on your life are an outward depiction of the development going on inside. And so if you're standing in life And you're saying, I don't understand why I'm going through this. I don't understand why I have 14 years of pain on my heart. I don't understand why I've I've been in this place. I don't understand why I've walked through what I've walked through. I don't understand the loss I've seen. I don't understand the hurt I've felt. I don't understand any of it. And all you're doing is you're trying to make excuses. And you're trying to cover the stretch marks because the stretching in your life, while it was painful when you walked through it, it was developing something inside of you that you can stand up and you can say, I will not be a victim no more. I will not be defeated no more because you have no rival. You have, you are the greatest thing that I can have in my life. You are my source. You are everything I need. But if I try to hide my development and people will look and and, and people, people see, when I was starting this message series, I actually Google searched stretch marks Maybe not do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe just not ever do that. Maybe not. But the problem is that it's a it's a it's a sign of what's developing on the inside. Now you look at you look at stretch marks and and you think I can't believe what my body went through. But it produced something. It produced something great. It produced something that can make a difference in the world. It produced something that can make a change, that can make an impact. The stretch marks that I'm afraid of, the stretch marks that hurt, the stretch marks that I try to hide, produce something so valuable that you would give your life for it. Except when the stretch marks are what we don't want. We can take the stretch marks of pregnancy because it's just a natural part of, 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 of life. It's a natural part of, of, of having children. And so we can deal with that. And, but but what, what about the stretch marks that don't come with that? What about the stretch marks from the pain that you walk through? What about the stretch marks of divorce that tear your family apart? And now all of a sudden, the baby just wants to know why mommy and daddy can't be together. Is it my fault? Is it something I did? And now your stretch marks have become their stretch marks. Or when, you're, when your father leaves like mine did and you grow up thinking, why didn't he want me? Why wasn't I good enough? Why did he leave? What did I do? Was it my fault? And now my stretch marks came from something that he did. But if we can just look past the stretching and we can see the growth, if we can look past the stretching and we can see the development. This has been the source behind the entire series. Development changes your whole life. Development will switch up your whole structure. Development inside of you will make other people not want to come around no more. And they will say, I can't even get with you right now. And you will say, why? What am I doing wrong? It's not what you're doing wrong, but you're changing. You're not the person you used to be. The you I used to hang out with is not who you are no more. And so some of your stretch marks are not because something's uh, growing inside of you, but because something is falling off of you. Something is falling away from you. And the problem is we try to stop it and we try to say, I need this in my life. And God is saying, you don't need it. You don't need it. True development on the outside will always leave evidence. Isaiah 43, 2 said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. God said, no matter what you go through, no matter what stretch marks you see in your life, you will not be permanently damaged by 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 a temporary issue. You will have a permanent reminder for a temporary issue, but it will not stay with you forever. 
Isaiah continues in verse 43, in verse 18, and he says, Do not remember the former things. Do not consider the old things. I am doing something new. Moses is standing at the intersection of faith and fear, of development and destruction. Have you ever been at that intersection? Have you ever looked one way and seen the faith of God that you've walked in for so long and then looked the other way and seen the fear of the enemy pouring it into your heart? Have you ever been at that intersection? Have you ever seen these things? I'm going to skip a couple things. I didn't realize I had expended my time so quickly. There's something growing inside of you. And it starts off small. But if you feed it, and if you take care of it, it will become something great. But we have to do our part. Let me give you a couple things about stretching and developing. The first thing is that doubt destroys development. Your doubt destroys your development. Verse 2, verse 1, he says, but suppose they will not believe me. What if you send me, God? What if I go and they don't want nothing to do with me? Do you know that was a big fear of mine? God said, move across the country and start a church. Planting a church was never on my list. And I said, what if I go all the way to Fort Wayne? What if I go to the place where everybody says there's already enough churches? They don't need you. They don't want to hear you. They already got preachers up there. Why don't you do something else? Why don't you do something different? And the doubt set in and the fear set in. And I sat at my intersection. And I said, what if I go all the way there, God, for nothing? What if I go all the way? Listen, when, 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 as I said earlier about Tim filling Brent's spot, when Brent and, and Danita chose to pursue their ministry, it was hard for me because I want everybody to stay because that's just me. The minute somebody leaves, I think I did something wrong. Whether it's pursuing ministry, whether it's you're going like another woman at the early stages of the church left because some friends of hers were planning a church and she felt called to go help them. And I thought the same thing. Then I thought, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? God, I came all the way up here for this and they're not even staying here. They've left, God. But God said, your job is to plant the seed. The development is between them and me. Your job is to plant the seed. Your job is to is to to make sure the field is ready. Your job is to get things going. The way it's developed is between that person and God. I cannot get focused on the things that don't happen. I cannot get focused on the things that I might have done. I cannot focus on the doubt because doubt destroys development. The second thing Dependency deepens development. God, Moses said, not me, God. God said, what's in your hand, Moses? I found this stick. I kept it because I thought it was a cool depiction of what Moses probably had. He said, what's in your hand, Moses? He said, a rod, but I'm going to call it a stick because that's what it is. A stick. It's the Jonathan translation. What's in your hand? A stick? Throw it on the floor. He threw it on the floor. I know it's probably the ground, but I say floor, so get off me. Throw it on the floor. He threw it on the floor. It became a certain serpent. Moses said, I'm out. Nope, you got the wrong guy. You got the wrong customer. This ain't for me, God. I'm not the one. God said, no, 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 don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Depend on me. Depend on, dependency deepens your development. And Moses walked right back to what he was afraid, and he picked it up. And it became a stick again in his hand. He said, Moses, put your hand inside of your jacket. And he put his hand in there, and he pulled it out, and it was leprous. It was covered with disease. He said, put it back in. He put it back in, and it came out clean. What God said is, I'm getting you ready in here for what I'm going to have you do out there. God's getting you ready in here for what he wants you to do out there. The problem is that the staff represents the supply. God represents the source. 
Never confuse your supply with your source. A supply can run out. A source cannot. The source of something is where you find it. If, if you were here uh, and you, and you, on, on Tuesday, you could have you heard uh, Ashley and Kenny as they shared about their, their development in their company and what they were doing and how God is just really doing good things for them. And, and the key of that, all that is, yes, there was development. Yes, there was faith. That God is blowing them up great. And I would encourage you to support that business as much as you can. But other than that, this is what I want to you they understand where their source came from that the supply and the source were two different things that when one of them had a job and the other one didn't they still had the source when they both were working for the company and and, and, and maybe money was tight at times they both recognize where the source comes from when you know what your source is your supply is never the concern never confuse the so, the, the supply with the source He gives resources. He gives resources. But don't get so focused on the resource that you lose the source. He is the source. The last thing it does is your deeds declare development. What you do. He said, take this staff and with it do my signs. Do my wonders. What has God given to you? Maybe it's t-shirts. And with it, you do his wonders because you put on t-shirts things like you have no rival. You put scripture on t-shirts. And so you, he says, what is in your hand? And you say, a t-shirt. Do my wonders with it. What's in your hand? A songbook. Then do my wonders with it. What's in your hand? A microphone. Then do my wonders with it. What's in your hand? My child then do my wonders with it. What's in your hand? My little bit of resources. Then do my wonders with it. Supply and source are different, but what you do with it will show your development. Because a little boy just had some fish and loaves. He had a supply, but he brought his supply to the source. And when you bring your supply to the source, there is nothing that the source cannot do. So when you look at your bank account and you say, this is my supply, but God, I'm going to bring it to the source and I'm going to put a little bit in the wicker basket because I know that my supply and my source are different. And if I can get what I have into the source, I know it will be everything I need it to be. How do you know? Because I seen Elijah tell the widow, if you go make me a cake, you will never run out of food. She said, I'm just going to eat this and I'm going to go sit with my son. We're going to eat and we're going to die. He said, first, bring it to me. The prophet represented the source. First, bring it to me. And she did. And as long as there was need, her oil never ran out and her flour bin was never empty because she first brought it to the source. What you do with what you have says a lot about your development. Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things behind me. In other words, when I developed properly, I put childish things behind me. And when I developed properly, I started focusing on the main thing. When I developed properly, I stopped looking at all the things that were around me. And I started focusing on my source and only my source. But it couldn't happen until my development was what it needed to be. I'm going to close with this. Don't be ashamed of your stretch marks. Subtitle. I'm not telling you to walk around showing everybody your skin because you're, like the pastor said, don't be ashamed of my stretch marks. So bless God. We are. No, that's not what I'm saying. Don't be ashamed of what you've been through. Don't be ashamed of the growth. Don't be ashamed of the things that have been uncomfortable. They're a badge of honor. And you might not see it at first, but what's on the inside of you, when what's on the inside of you is developed and it hits what's on the inside of somebody else, you never know 
what can happen. I'm going to read you something, and I promise this is the last thing I'm going to read you. I promise. I always look to Jessica when I make those statements to see if she believes me or not. I'm going to read something from Luke chapter 1. And then I'm going to shut it down if I can find Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, I'm going to read you something. Mary is pregnant. She goes to see her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth would give birth to John the Baptist. And a lot of scholars believe, and, and, and like part of the reason why um, uh, Elizabeth's husband, God took his voice, was because they didn't believe, they didn't have doubt. Then they said, I'm going to name him John. And they was like, but your husband's name is not John. John is not a name in your family. So, and so many people believe that because of the doubt they had, that the baby was actually, they, they believed the baby to be dead, that Elizabeth had not felt it, that there was all these issues and that, that she was having maybe a miscarriage. And a lot of people tend to believe that because you don't hear much about that. Maybe that's not the case. But then you come in into Luke chapter 1. Mary is pregnant. Elizabeth is pregnant. Mary says, I'm going to go spend time with Elizabeth. And I want to read you this right here, and then we're going to be done. Verse 41, Luke 1, verse 41. And it happened that when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that when what is inside of Jessica heard the greeting inside of Jonathan, that what is inside of Ashley heard the greeting inside of, 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 of Dustin. That what is inside of, of any one of us heard the development of what was going on in somebody else. That the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. You never know what you can do in somebody else's life unless you allow what's inside of you to develop and to hit somebody else. What are, what are you saying? Are you saying that if, if I develop, I can do what you do? I can play the piano like Tim? I can sing like Trisha? No, I'm not saying none of that. What I'm saying is that if you allow the seed to develop, God will show you what is yours. He will show you your gift. He will show you your staff. He will show you your supply. And then it's up to you to bring it back to the source. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for development. God, I pray that as we stand here, as we sit here, as we come in this room, as we spend time, whether it's singing or listening to the word, God, I pray that your, your word is felt, that your presence is in this room, that you would rest amongst us.